It was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. I just want to experience something else than a black man. <laughs> move on, move on. Like we a host of blinkers. Honestly, on. say, I was about to have Corrupt. sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. <laughs> Hi, good day, everyone. My name is Tavisa Nomunganga. I'm 29 years old. I uh, was born in Langa. Hi, I'm Andre Deglon. I was born in a tiny little place called Kimberley. Um, my name is Wandi Lebase. I'm born in Kogule too. I'm not partially sighted, I'm, I'm a B1, so I cannot see. I'm Marlin Leroux and um, I was born with a disability. I got polio when I was three months old. I'm a proud person with a disability. And I come from the rural area, Wellington. Hey, I'm Shelley Barry. I am originally from Port Elizabeth and I'm a filmmaker. I'm in a wheelchair after shooting in 1996, taxi violence. Okay, in 2001, uh, I was involved in a shooting incident, hijacking. I was with my boyfriend and um, they shot us and he died on the scene. And yeah, he left me paralyzed. Um, I, I was hurt in a car accident, a very bad car accident. Um, but to go back to the medical, I mean, if we want to talk about medical models, then really um, I have a spinal cord injury. Um, yeah, but that's about as much as I would say about how I got a disability. Uh, I was um, involved in a shooting, an attempted um, hijack. Um, the guy panicked and he shot me because I was trying to get hold of my phone and it shot me via, from left to right. That's how I got my disability. I have a real story of um, the apartheid era, where in Wellington it gets extremely hot in December. And I was born in September. And um, in the apartheid era, as we all know, it was segregation, high segregation. And my mother took me to the doctor, to the clinic, to say to them that, listen here, yeah, there's something wrong with me. And this doctor, the white doctor said, and she knew that I didn't get the vaccine yet. So the vaccine, the injection, wasn't there for the black clinic. And the doctor just had one look and said, ah, what do you people know? It's, uh, it's teething, she's teething. And over that weekend, I contracted full-blown polio. Mm. And I couldn't understand for years why this doctor has treated my mother and myself actually sometimes for free until I realized when I traced my story because my mother and my and my granny come from very poor backgrounds for them it was a huge guilt mm. that that they were blamed from that instance yeah. taking me to that doctor they were blamed actually saying to them what do you know and it was at the back of their mind and when I traced it back I realized that this doctor was mm. so full of guilt that he shoved me because I'm a black person away from that particular clinic. And that guilt actually was eating mm. them up mm. from, from the start. And it took a lot from my side to let them get over that particular guilt, that it's fine, it mm. happened, it was that era. And when it happened to me, I was only 21 years old. I just started working, I just completed um, a diploma at the Cape Technicon, and uh, it was difficult. I mean, I lost my mother in 1998, and now I was faced with disability, having to adjust to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of moving around at home, I mean, I was born in Langa, stayed in a two-bedroom house, small bathroom. I had difficulties, it was difficult. I actually thought that um, it was the end of my life, because I couldn't see myself, mm -hmm. you know, succeeding in all the other things that I wanted to do at the time. But then as, as time went by, I met people, I read a lot, and I prayed a lot, and it actually helped me. And I'm here today because I decided that um, I'll continue with my life. I won't let the disability um, set me back. You are bombarded with this notion, mass-produced notion of, of what beauty is supposed to be. And so often a girl with a disability does not fit into that mold um, physically, 
or in, in, in any other way. So I think that there is, th when I look at girls with disability that have come to accept themselves because it starts with them, I, I'm, I, I marvel because the sheer courage and the, the sheer tenacity of that person immediately just blows me away. Speaking about on my personal view, like in, it's an accident, I wasn't born with a disability. It's an accident which occurred um, two years back. And um, taking from that experience, it's a huge adoption. Like you, you adapt in many things, like you were not born blind, but now you cannot do anything by yourself. It's like you, you, because I was, in a bit, I was a bit isolated. Because I isolated from us, myself from everyone else, like as in from the world, like the world didn't exist. Because taken from my experience, I like, I stayed for about eight months inside the house, not going out, just like trying to gather myself and find out, can I cope? Will I cope? Will I be able to move on and carry on with my life? Can you imagine going on a Golden Arrow bus? Mm-mm. But I mean, just the issue with Gaila Ride, for example, um, uh, you know, it's difficult enough to get employment. Mm -hmm. When you do get employment, how do you get there? And um, so I called Dyla Ride when I got a job here in Cape Town. And I said, well, I would like to make use of the service. And they said to me, well, sorry, we're full. You'll have to be on a waiting list. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how long? They said, well, we can't really say, could be a year. What do I do in the meantime? I need to get to, 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 to my workplace. I spent an average of 1,000 Rand on cabs. Yes. Mm. Going from Woodstock to observatory and back. Just, just to go to work. Sorry, when, when I actually started working after my disability, there was no dialer right at the time. Mm -hmm. It was back in 2001. I had to use a taxi from home to town. I always had to have someone with me, like my sister or my cousin. I had a cousin who wasn't working at the time. So he had to take me to town every time uh, with my wheelchair to lift me up the taxi, mm -hmm. to close my wheelchair, mm -hmm. put it on the seat, and taxi drivers, they demand that you pay for your wheelchair. Yes. yes. And you still have to pay for the person who's with you. So there's like three first. Yes. And I spent a lot of money. Mm. And Dialaride actually started in 2002 and was still a problem because mm. they will forget about you. Mm. You'll be at work until seven oh, o'clock at night mm. until my father said, no, I think you need to come in and move in with me because now I think my safety was at risk at the time. I think the, the lack of accessible transport in South Africa just highlights and amplifies and is, serves as a base model of how it's really the social model. That it's, it's not about the disability, it's not about my wheelchair yeah. that prevents me from participating meaningfully in society, mm -hmm. in employment. It is the lack of meaningful transport. So it is about the, the, the support system that I have around me, not my disability. Mm -hmm. You know, you get so tired mm -hmm. of, of all the time just yeah. pushing yeah. And, and you ask yourself, actually, how do you? Yeah. Uh, how do you? Because you also need to live, you know, you also need to survive. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes the challenges just get too much that you ask yourself, how are you going to pull this through now? You also need to live a happy life. Yes. And be joyful, <laughs> you know, and not attract all this negative energy. Yeah. And yet you have to lobby about transport, you have to lobby about employment, you have to lobby about accessibility. It, 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 does, it, does, it does wear you down. And then again, it is, then, then the perception is, oh, it's because she has a disability that she's yes. so miserable. But I can speak actually being born as a person with a disability. And the from a very young age, mm you are pulled down by, by telling people actually very subtly, even in your family setup, that you're actually not good enough. So you, in that way that you go into your path of your journey, of your life journey, you start actually not to push boundaries. That in the setup, you're actually accepting the crumbs from the table and then you think, wow, I have achieved something. Society has, has in many ways separated us and put us into little boxes People are socialized into believing that the person with a disability should be on the, on the, on the corner um, begging or they should be in an institution. And, and, but, but when people get it, and I think it's easier for 
other disadvantaged groups um, to understand that it's that it's actually a, a social issue that this is a, about power this is about the fact that saying because I don't have a disability I'm a little bit more um, I'm, I'm better than you you know so but so but other marginalized groups get it immediately because they understand the issue of social justice um, and equality and yeah it's, it's almost as if the onus lies on us to be disability activists and it's like saying you know only women should fight for, for women's rights only people with HIV AIDS mm. should be fighting for their rights it is an issue of society yes. and I think what concerns me most I don't know your experiences mm. is when you have educated people or people, the closest people to you or people who have hung out with you, people who know you well, spend time with you, know the barriers, know the issues, they still don't get it yes. sometimes. Yes. And sometimes, too yes. many times they don't get it. So I will be invited to a function, for example, and then they'll say, oh, there's just a flight of stairs. <laughs> but don't worry. Yes. Don't worry, we'll carry you up. It's no problem. Yes. Never mind that it's dangerous for myself and for them, um, because wheels roll. Yes. And 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 it's just it's always very disconcerting when you feel that you've done all the awareness, education raising, and you with educated people who are liberal and progressive in so many other issues, and they will still say, "Oops, there's just just a flight." Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just a yes. Flight. Welcome. There's just a flight of stairs. Oh, why do we carry you? Um, and pe just people just don't get it. And and I think. One reaches a point where you just get really tired. You get tired of fighting and you get tired of... If I want to go jawling and I am party animal. Yes. We all know <laughs> this. <laughs> I will choose to go up that flight of stairs. Yes. But don't invite me mm. and tell me there's some stairs in the meantime, you know, because it's got to be my choice. Mm. If I'm going to take the risk, I'm going to take it. Um, but, but people need to just get it, you know, and realise that it's an issue for everyone. It's not you, Undre, or you, Tabisa, it's, it's everyone's issue. It's everyone's issue to educate themselves, to be aware, to start using the right terminology, to educate themselves, to get a wake-up call, and to put disability on the same level as you would put racism, gender issues, and all the other issues that affect our society and make us a society that isn't equal. Mm. And it's like we're on the back burner, we know we're like the last issue on the table. Mm. It gets a bit exhausting. I get a bit bored with it actually sometimes. To make it like an opposite person, like any person that I'm with, like at work, at the bus stop, like I always make a person that's, that's an able person, but an able bodied person, to feel at ease. Like I would joke about myself. Mm. That's how confident am I. Like mm. I would joke about myself because then I'll make that person also that's with me or wherever I am at ease and, and knowing what, like, no man, I'm just in person, so you can say anything, like, because many, many people have restrictions as to not saying the right people to, because they, they might fear that they might offend you in a way, like, something like that. I wasn't married to, uh, we were seeing each other, and then I became disabled, and for him it was always, he, he, there, were, there were two scenarios, A, I would have died, or B, I happen to be in a wheelchair and now I walk with crutches. And his, pers his perspective was always, hey, I could have lost you, you know. Yeah. Um, the, I'll take the wheelchair, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it was always, for him, it, he always saw it like that. For Take for instance, for in my situation, like, I became disabled and at the, it, and, it, and, it, and it also goes according to the age, I would put it. Because the younger you become, if you get disabled at a younger age, and maybe you might have been involved with that specific person, I don't think they would take it as, uh, the, this guy now, he, he, um, one day he cannot see. What am I going to do with mm. a boyfriend that cannot see? Because I'll be pulling him around everywhere and he wouldn't be able to. It all depends with the age also. The, uh, the younger you become, it, you, you must be confident, very confident. And, but the older you become, it's, it's like, um, there, there's, there's already that bond before, and like, um, there's been many things that you've been passed through, maybe for the past years. But my point is, it, it really goes down to the age of a person when you become disabled. I like my short skirts. I like to show who I am, and I, it's, it's, it's such. Then sometimes I forget myself that people are not comfortable mm -hmm. 
with, with persons with disability that is comfortable with themselves. And you see the shock on their faces when you go onto the dance floor and you dance your heart out. It is, I actually get a kick out of it. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a huge drug thing for me. And, and I really enjoyed it because you, you, you can see how people grappling with it. Is she going to fall? Can I ask her for a dance? Is she going to be offended? And I think, you know, you have to lift feet. I can dance. I've got rhythm. But now you're looking out of, I'm coming out of space. Yeah. And these are the boundaries. And until I didn't make that aha moment that I laugh a lot, I'm loud, I'm in your face. If you have a problem with it, it's your problem. Yes. I, I think what, what you're saying permeates also other areas of our lives. Just like people don't expect you to be wearing a mini, so they also don't expect Shelley to be a TV producer, or they don't expect me to, to have a career, to be the CEO of an organization, to actually have the power to make decisions, to hire and fire, heaven forbid not. But you know, the actual, <laughs> that I actually have decision-making power. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you see, you see the instant shock on their faces when you introduce yourself across the table, and they're looking for where is the, you know, where is the decision maker? Hello, here I am. <laughs> when I cannot see you, does it mean I cannot think for myself and I cannot yes. hear? Because now most of the people like we, like if I cannot see you, then I cannot think. Do I want to open this door? Because I cannot see. That doesn't mean like most of the people in the society, they should get like a person you can, despite of any of your, your, your disability, but speaking from my disability, like if I'm not sighted, does that mean I do not have a vision? Like mm. you, you might not have, you might not, you might not be sighted, but you do have a vision in life. You do know what to do and you can think. Like most of my, many people, like in, in my experience, they think if I cannot see, I cannot hear them too. <laughs> Hey, Wendy, like, I cannot see, but I can hear you. <laughs> like, those type of thing. Yeah. When I became pregnant with my first child, is that the disbelief on people's faces? How it, dare you how have sex? Dare you have sex? <laughs> and how dare you going to carry this child? The questions that's been asked in your face. Mm. Then with my second child, is like, Oh, another miracle has happened. And when the child has been diagnosed with severe cerebral palsy, it's like people putting that guilt into me. You should have known that child. You should have never been able to have a second child. And those are what society has put. And we love this boy unconditionally. Mm. You know, it's life. And if a life has been given to you, it's the most, what Adam gives to our family, it's amazing. And I think being disabled myself, I could accept Adam very easily. But going to a restaurant, for instance, just the, the pity, the pity thing, um. is that people will ask the persons that's with Adam and I, would they like to have tea? As if I can't speak. Mm -hmm. And... In the beginning, because Adam makes a lot of noise, he can't speak, the, the, the waiter will ask us very politely, don't you want to sit at the back of the restaurant? Mm. And me being me, I will say, we will sit where uh, we want to sit because it's our money. If these patrons yes. feel uncomfortable with us, it's their problem. Mm -hmm. When I go to a, a restaurant, I have to constantly tell people, this is not how you are going to treat me. I demand mm -hmm. to be treated like anybody else who's now going to have a meal with my family. Don't grab my crutches and try and stick them away mm -hmm. so they're out of the way because of your other patrons. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's at the end of the meal, I'm not going to try and stick my money away. Mm. I'm going to have to pay you the same <laughs> money that mm. other people are paying you. It's like we're invisible. No one wants to look at, look at us because it's their biggest fear that that will happen to them. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a phrase that I remember from somewhere, I can't think now. No woman wants a dicey child. Mm. 
Yeah. You know, also because if we go back and and the you know, the very origin of motherhood, a sex was only the domain of the non-disabled. Yeah. Only if you could walk and see and hear, could were you allowed to copulate mm -hmm. with someone. Yes. So a we're challenging the stereotype because we're copulating, I believe. Yeah. We're we, we having we intimate. <laughs> we're having sex. We're having sex. <laughs> and we're reproducing, I mean, reproduction, that, that definitely is just for the elite. <laughs> the non disabled. I don't see myself as disabled. Like, it's, as, as Undre said, it's all in the mind. Like, I do whatever, whichever other guy would do. If, if I just get the right picture in mind, because I always have a friend of mine, how does she look? She looks like this, does she have this and this and that? Then like, I usually, I, I do not um, encounter many things as to um, um, fearing of not um, approaching that person or such and so, or, or so, or, or so forth. But I, I, I do not like, it's all in the mind as a guy that um, if you're disabled, you're going to isolate yourself. Because I do party, I do go to Long Street time and again, and um, I do not see any, any challenges for me because I, it's all in the mind. Mm. It's all in, really in the mind for any other guy. But um, speaking for myself, and um, I wouldn't know for the other. Okay, so when you like a girl, what's your strategy? Like, what, mm -hmm. What's your moves? Mm -hmm. What's your moves? <laughs> we want to know what is yeah. your move. <laughs> it will depend, uh, like, the, usually, when you <laughs> flirt with anyone, <laughs> it will start with something to, depending on where you at. So it, usually the conversation will go according to where we are at, and the how's the vibe. So mm, normal yeah, stuff. Yeah, normal things like as an, any other person would yes. do. But, but but you know that 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 blind people are the best lovers. Yeah. Don't you know best. that? <laughs> That's a notion. Do people That's not know that? No. Do they not know that? Ah, ah. I want Lily. <laughs> 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 you get a test drive him. The hook now, guys, because you're talking about his strategy and how is he going to approach the girl. You know, his strategy is his strategy. Otherwise, they will know that it's his strategy. But he's so good. I mean, one delay. I mean, I mean, I mean. One <laughs> delay has streams of girls who knock down our office door. Well, he's very handsome, so you can't blame him. He's a handsome guy. But sexuality is also about confidence. Absolutely. You know, it's 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 not just it's not just about the act. Mm -hmm. It's about um, it's that whether whether you're in touch with yourself, because if if you're not in touch with yourself, you can be whoever with whoever. Absolutely. And then it's not going to to work. You can be blind. You can be deaf. You it's it's just not going to work, yeah. because it's about you having an interaction not just with the other person but with yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fortunately for me it works 10 out of 10 times <laughs> what 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 <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> So either I'm very in touch with myself or the other person's very in touch with myself. <laughs> It's so weird for people when we, as women with disability, are in control about our sexuality, that we love being a woman, because you're first a woman, and then all the ifs comes that if you're disability, disability is disregarded, but other people see your disability, and I think those are the challenges that you have all the time. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's really a lot about self-acceptance, um, about going through that journey of almost rediscovering yourself and reclaiming your sexuality. It's not just instantly going to come because, of course, you're bombarded by the fact that you are different, that um, people with disabilities are not seen as, as sexual beings, as people, you know. It's just um, it's a constant battle. But it's your, own, it's your own perception that also needs to change. 
and realizing that society is the one with the barriers. I, I guess it's all about communication mm -hmm. and you know talking to your partner and, and saying this is what I feel comfortable with and this is what I enjoy yes. and this is what I like. I, I guess with me it works that way. Educating your partner, talking to him and saying this is what I do. But I think the point is also that you're not only comfortable with yourself but that someone else is also comfortable with themselves. Because yeah. if you're comfortable with yourselves then, and if you are evolved, you know, in terms of seeing people as beings and not, you know, necessarily just focusing on the physical, um, people can see beyond the, the, you know, just like the, the, the perception of society. And, and, and be, if they're comfortable with themselves, then they won't have an issue being with a, with a person with a disability. Mm -hmm. They won't worry about who's going to say what, because yes. that's nonsense in the first place, you know, so it kind of, um, it, 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 it's a good thing in a way because people, you, it, the ones who, are, who do come to you, you know they're the real thing. Mm, they <laughs> are. You know, it's like the weed from the shack. That's, <laughs> that's true. I always say you are not born with culture. You're not born with a language. You are not born in a society. You are born in society and in a home that actually geared you into morals issues, mm -hmm. vision, mm -hmm. language, and that. Mm -hmm. And just being engaging with people in South Africa where we are so being in geographical areas and into boxes, mm -hmm. you then realize that the issue of being disabled, you are actually going to be put on a pedestal that you can't actually be a rude person. Mm -hmm. People don't want to say to you, and that's where the pity things comes in. If you're rude, people used to say to you, hey, you're bloody rude. Mm. And forget that you're disabled, you're rude. Mm. You can't use a disability in order to be rude to people, in order to be racist, mm. in order to get sexual favors, mm. in order to abuse your children or your wife. These are the evils that we also, as in the disabled world, we need to put on the table and in mm. the center. That we not just want to see that society are doing things to us, we, as persons with disabilities, need to say also that what are the evils that we are also having inside of us? Because we are first and foremost of a society that's been geared that we've been in boxes. I think it, it all starts with a, with, a, with a notion of being less than um, or childlike, childlike, passive, Passive recipients of care, always needing to be to be to be taken care of, and 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 but in the, that in itself, almost mandates that person with a disability to never achieve full human rights status, the, like a, a full human being. Only I, I would assume that you can only be a full human being and then get all the negative traits. But for as long as 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 as, as you are just a child, a childlike passive you ca you you can't really have all those 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 negative harsh aggress aggressive um, traits so again it in in many ways it, it reminds us that the, the the notion of disability starts in the mind it's a mindset um, and if we really want to achieve full status we need to constantly challenge the mind we it's it's a, uh, our fight is, is, is with a mind and how people perceive us. My dream is to have a wonderful family, my own family, get married, have my own kids and um, run my own company. My dream is that everyone should have a decent place to live, enough food to eat, a meaningful, a meaningful relationship and a meaningful job. My dream is to have a family and to become famous. The, despite of the way I am, and for everyone that's um, that's um, in the society that that doesn't understand disability, please, we are human, and my dream is for everyone to understand and take us as we are. My dream is that everybody has a chance for quality of life, and quality of life for me is not material things. Quality of life is that you have access to the things that makes you tick as a human being as access to housing, access to a job. But my personal dream is that I want to be an actress and I want to be a model.
Challenge. Ah, <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> um, I think my dream is is that we all learn to love well um, and get over our egos. 